Happy spring equinox. Let's make a pond. The first step in building any pond is deciding what you're going to line it with. The three main ways of lining a pond are with a rigid liner, a soft flexible liner, or with clay puddling. Clay puddling is really only suitable for huge ponds like the old kind you'd find in villages and is very difficult to achieve on a domestic scale. And flexible liners take a certain amount of skill to install, so I recommend anyone who's new to making ponds starts with a rigid liner like we did. Going to see pond liners in person at a well-stocked garden centre or pond specialist gives you a chance to really get an idea for the size and shape of your pond. It can be hard to visualise things based on descriptions alone. Although I did really like the technique this one eBay seller used to showcase their pond size. You can sometimes get rigid pond liners second hand through Gumtree or other classifieds, but we chose to get ours from a local pond shop. Sadly they were going out of business so we did get a 30% discount, but it was still quite expensive. The pond size we ended up choosing was 500 litres, but if you can only fit a much smaller pond in your garden, don't worry, it will still have a really good positive impact on wildlife in your area. Even a small bowl can be converted into a mini pond that provides water for birds and invertebrates. Before I start digging out my pond, I just wanted to show you a couple of things that I think are pretty cool. So my pond line has been out here for a few days now and it rained during that time and all this dust collected here. This is actually dust from the Sahara Desert. We had it brought over in a dust storm and then dropped on the UK as rain. So that's kind of cool. And down here in the area I'm going to be digging is a beautiful little wild violet, but don't worry. I've got more of them elsewhere in the garden, so I'm not going to be eliminating them entirely. Along with the pond former itself, I've got some tools for this project here. A wheelbarrow, obviously, then mattock, spade and shovel. Gloves to help protect my hands during this project and a can of spray paint to mark things out. I've also got some bags of sharp sand. This is to go under the pond form to make sure that it settles nicely into the earth and isn't pressing against any sharp rocks or roots or anything like that. I've got a tonne sack here that I'm going to put the dug up soil into. I'm not going to put the soil straight on my beds over there because I know this soil has been here for a while. It's going to be full of weed seeds. It's going to be full of all sorts. There's some crocosmia growing there in this patch. So there'll probably be bulbs in it too. And I don't want to undo the work I've been doing keeping weeds down. My first step is just roughly marking out where I want this pond to be. This is just going to help me know where the edge of my hole to dig is going to be. Woo! Spray paint fumes. There's my beautiful pond amoeba shape <laughs> marked out. I just want to say there is no way in hell that I'm going to finish this in one session. Our soil is very heavy clay and it's been raining recently so it's going to be extra heavy. I've got at least 500 litres of it to take out because that's the dimensions of the pond. I think it's going to take me maybe five, even six sessions to finish this. Not a quick project but hopefully one that's going to last a really long time. At the end of my first session of digging this is as far as I've got. I think I've done about a fifth so probably four more sessions to go. It needs to be up to my knee and it's like kind of up to my ankle at the moment. Yeah <laughs> it's gonna be a long one this one. Digging out soil is really hard work especially when you're working with a heavy clay soil like we have here in my garden. You need to be careful to work in a way that protects your back. Make use of the power in your legs and the effect of gravity by bending at the knee into a squat position when you drop down with your mattock, rather than bending at the waist, which will put strain on your back. When it's time to lift the soil out of the hole, use that same technique. Bend with your legs, scoop up the soil, straighten your legs to rise and empty your scoop, rather than bending at the waist and lifting. If you follow these tips, you should be able to get through your pond installation without injury. Happy digging! 
end of session number two and my tan sack's looking pretty full but the hole <laughs> the hole is not close to being done I just don't understand how I can dig that much out and it l not only look like so little but also not be anywhere close <laughs> And remember, if you get bored of digging, you can just rope someone else into doing it for you. Every once in a while, you just want to drag your pond form in and just check where it is, where it's catching. So, like, we've got a good amount of space on this side here. Doesn't need digging out any more there. Needs a little bit more in that back corner. And a little bit where the irises are. Yeah. But it's getting very close. So pretty much there on the digging, we're just getting the spirit level so we can check that it's level because obviously if one side is a lot lower then when you put the water in the water level will be level and the pond won't and it will look bad. So that's what stage we're at now. I've got to go back in and build some of these shelves with clay again, just using my hands and the clay. And then it's time to get the sand on it. All I'm doing here is taking the subsoil clay that I've dug out, mixing it with water to make it more pliable, and then slopping it into place. So that's going to make those shelves that are there in the pond form and just support those from underneath. Then after testing the former out one last time, we started to add the sand in at a depth of about three centimetres. Okay, so we've put the sand down and we've tried it out and it seems to be possible for it to be level. Uh, we've got these gaps at the side, so I think the best course of action now is to just fill it in from the side. Fill it up now down there. It's done. So you can see that we've filled it all up around the edges. There are a few gaps in a few places but we're hoping that when it rains rainwater will flush this loose soil around and help fill those gaps in. I've got a pillar of bricks in the middle that's going to provide shelter and habitat for aquatic life but also there's sculpture that I want to have on the top so it looks like it's sitting on the top of the water so that's what that's for and yeah the next stage the next thing I'm going to do is go online and do some shopping for aquatic plants. I have got a couple that I bought at the same time as the pond liner, but I know I need an oxygenator and there are edible aquatic perennials that I really want to get. So I've got to try and hunt those down. So that's my next step. Uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing us put together this rigid form pond and I'll see you next time when I plant this pond up. Okay, bye! Yes, uh, weirdly enough, floating water hyacinth, which is one of the world's most invasive species, has now been banned from sale in the UK.